Hello students, this is Mr. Allen and today we are going to look at chapter 8. We are moving into uh, section 8.1 which is on the Pythagorean theorem and its converse. Chapter 8 we're going to deal with uh, trigonometry. Trigonometry is uh, trig, so triangle, so it deals with triangles. Our objective today is to use the Pythagorean theorem and to be able to use its converse. My guess is that most students are going to be familiar with the Pythagorean Theorem. It's something that we teach in Algebra 1, but let's go through it again. So the Pythagorean Theorem says the following. If a triangle is a right triangle, then the sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs is equal to the square of the lengths of the hypotenuse. So if triangle ABC is a right triangle, then leg squared plus the other leg squared is equal to the hypotenuse or you're probably more familiar with just seeing this a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now it's very important to note that the hypotenuse is going to be c in this case. Now one other thing I want to emphasize about this theorem, by the way this is probably the most important theorem in all of mathematics is it is written in if-then form like most of our theorems. Remember, if this, then that. P arrow Q. If it is a right triangle, then A squared plus B squared equals C squared. If this, then that. So let's look at an example. It says, what is the length of the hypotenuse ABCD? And then it says, do the side lengths of the a triangle ABC form a Pythagorean triple, which I'll talk about in just a second. So let's go ahead and figure out what the length of the hypotenuse is. Now, remember, the hypotenuse, the hypotenuse is the side that is opposite the right angle. So this side here, so segment AB is the hypotenuse. So that's the first thing to be aware of. So now we're just going to use our formula for the Pythagorean theorem and we can see that this is a right triangle so the Pythagorean theorem is going to apply. So we're going to do a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I'm going to let a equal 20. b is going to be 21. And then we would want to figure out what C squared is. So in my case here, I'm going to let C is equal to the length of segment AB. All right, so I've got my calculator here handy. This is definitely a section you're going to want to have a calculator handy. So 20 squared is 400. 21 squared is 441. That has to equal C squared. So now I'm going to add these two guys together. So that would be what? 800, oops, 841 equals C squared. So now how do we figure out what C is? Well, C is simply going to be the principal root of 841. That is the square root of 841. So I'm going to plug that into my calculator here. Uh, and it looks like it comes out to be exactly 29. So the length of AB the hypotenuse is 29. So we've answered our first question. Now the second question says, do the side lengths of a triangle ABC form a Pythagorean triple? The Pythagorean, the answer is yes. So I'll write yes, this is a Pythagorean triple because 20, 21, 29 satisfy the Pythagorean theorem. That's what we call Pythagorean triple. 20, 21, and 29 satisfy it. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So that's what makes it a Pythagorean triple. All right, let's look at another example. In this example here, we are actually going to find a leg instead of the hypotenuse. And I, I guess I should remind you, the hypotenuse is opposite the right angle. The legs are the two sides that form the right angle. So in this case, x is a leg, 8 is a leg, and 20 is the length of the hypotenuse. Okay, 
So it says express your answer in simplest radical form. So that leads me to believe this one's probably not going to come out to be a nice clean number. So let's go ahead and start with our theorem, which is, and by the way, note that this is a right triangle. Since it's a right triangle, we can do the Pythagorean theorem. So a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So I'm just going to let a be the x. B is going to be 8, and then the hypotenuse in this case, that long side is 20. So let's go ahead and square. So this is going to be 64. This is going to be 400. Now I need to subtract 64 for from, from 400. Again, I'm going to be very careful here and use my calculator so that I don't make any careless mistakes, and I would encourage you to do the same. So now x is equal to the square root of 360, or 336. So now what we want to do is we want to try to find the biggest perfect square. So perfect squares, in fact, let me write that down. So perfect squares are things like 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 30, anything like that. I'm going to see if any of those, let's see if 16, I'm just going to guess. I'm going to just see if 16, ah, oh, perfect, lucky guess. Okay, I did actually just guess. It turns out that 16 goes in to 30, 336, 21 times. So that means that this radical can be rewritten as 16 times 21. So my final answer is 4 radical 21. That's in simplest radical form. That's what the directions asked us to do. Now let me make a note here. This is not a Pythagorean triple. And you might say, wait a minute, Mr. Ryan, you said the last one was a Pythagorean triple because it satisfies the Pythagorean theorem. And I actually, I did say that and I wasn't quite completely correct. It has to satisfy the uh, Pythagorean theorem and they all have to be integers. They all have to be integers. So integers are numbers like 1, 2, 3. No fractions or decimals allowed. 20, 21, and 29 are all integers. If we look here, we get 4 square root of 21. And I'll just put 4 square root of 21 in my calculator. Uh, it turns out to be uh, approximately, I have to approximate this, 18.8. Three three zero three zero two blah blah. Anyways, it's not an integer, so this is not a Pythagorean triple. Okay. Oh, that's x. Moving on. Now this is an actually an applied problem now. So what we've done so far are kind of theoretical. You know, here's a triangle. So why might we care about the Pythagorean theorem in real life? So here's here's our problem says dog agility. Dog agility courses often contain a seesaw obstacle as shown below. To the nearest inch, how far above the ground are the dog's paws when the seesaw is parallel to the ground? In other words, what they're asking us to find is the height of this triangle. By the way, we'll note again that it is a right triangle, so the Pythagorean theorem does apply, so that's good. And so again, we're just going to do the a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Remember, c has to be the hypotenuse, and it looks like the hypotenuse in this case is 36, so I'll go ahead and plug that one in first. And I'm just going to call this side over here, this height, I'm going to call it h. So h squared plus 26 squared has to equal 36 squared. And again, I'm going to play through this uh, similarly like I've done in the previous pro problems. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of work here in my calculator. So I'm going to do 36 squared and I'm going to minus 26 squared. And that gives me 620. So now my answer, h, is going to be the square root of 620. Now this one, I'm just going to give my answer as a decimal. So I'm just going to do the square root. Again, this is why you want to have a calculator. And I get that the answer is approximately, and it doesn't tell us, oh, it says to the nearest inch. This decimal is 
eight nine nine seven nine nine two. So to the nearest inch, I would say about twenty five inches. That would be to the nearest inch. That's how high it is off the ground. So the length of the hypotenuse is 36. The length of the one leg is 26. And then the length of the height there is going to be approximately 25 inches. All right, so that's going to bring us to the end of our um, Pythagorean theorem examples. Now we're going to talk about the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. And before I do that, I want to remind you the Pythagorean theorem says if it is a right triangle, then a squared plus b squared equals c squared. The converse of the Pythagorean theorem says the following. If, and we're going to actually, we're going to start here. I'm going to call this one here number one. If a squared, I'm sorry, I'll say it this way. If c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared, so it looks like the same thing as the Pythagorean theorem but switched around. If c squared, that's the hypotenuse, is equal to a squared plus b squared, then it's a right triangle. Okay, so what we've done is we've taken the, the p, then q, and we've switched them around. Now, notice we've switched this around a little bit, too, and I'll explain why in just a second. <clears throat> but there are also two additional parts here. There's this part up here. It turns out that if the longest side, and that's what C is, and I should make a note of this, C is the longest side. If the longest side squared is less than the other two sides squared and added together, then it's an acute angle or an acute triangle. In other words, all of the angles are less than 90. If it's a right triangle, that tells us it has exactly one right angle. And then the third and final part here, and I'm going to erase what I just did there. Uh, okay, or not. Interesting. And then the third part here, if c squared is greater than a squared plus b squared, then it is an obtuse triangle. Then it is an obtuse triangle. So the, the first example I'm going to do on the next slide is going to be literally the converse of the um, Pythagorean theorem. So if c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared, then it's a right triangle. Let's look at an example. It says a triangle has side lengths 85, 84, and 13. Is the triangle a right triangle? So we don't know that it's a right triangle. We only know its sides. Now, c here has to be the longest side. A, it doesn't matter, and B, it doesn't matter. What does matter is that's the longest side. When you do these, this theorem, this converse of the Pythagorean theorem, you have to let the C be the longest side. So now let's check it out. The question is, is 85 squared, question mark, equal to 84 squared? plus 13 squared. That's the question. So again, I'm going to use my calculator here, and I'm going to do 85 squared, and I get 7,225, question mark. Now I'm going to do 84 squared, 7,056, and then 13 squared I know is 169. So let's see how that works out. Again, I'm going to put a question mark there. So 7,056 plus 169 turns out to be, aha, 7,225. It is equal. So the answer is, I'll do this in purple. Yes, the triangle is a right triangle by the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. The converse of the Pythagorean theorem says if C is equal to A squared plus B squared, then the triangle is a right triangle, and that's what we had here. We showed that C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared, and I guess maybe I should have written this in here. I'll put C squared equals A squared plus B squared. That's what we needed to show in order to conclude it was a right triangle, and we did that. Okay. 
Okay, last example. Now this is probably the hardest example because this one, it's not giving us any kind of clue what kind of triangle it is. It just tells us the side lengths are 6, 11, and 14. And it wants to know, is it acute, obtuse, or right? So the first thing that you want to do, number one, most important thing, you want to check to make sure that you make C the longest side. And I think you guys would agree that 14 is the longest side. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put that into C squared. And I'm going to put a question mark because we don't know what... We don't know what's going to go in that question mark. Is it going to be equal? Is it going to be greater than? Is it going to be less than? That's what we're going to find out. We do know that C has to be 14. So I'm going to put 14 squared, and then I'm going to put a question mark, equals 6 squared plus 11 squared. All right, I'm going to use my calculator again. And guys, I'm encouraging you to use yours, and I know I've said that, but I can't emphasize that enough. I don't want to make any careless mistakes with you guys. So I'm making sure that I, now like I know 6 squared and I know 11 squared well, but if you didn't, use your calculator. So now we're getting somewhere and I'm still going to leave this little question mark right there. And now I've got to do 36 plus 121, that's 157. And I still got this 96 over here. So the question is now, I'm going to put this question mark over here one more time with purple. Is 196 greater than? equal to or less than 196. I mean, obviously, I think it's obvious. Um, that's going to be greater than. So I'm going to put a greater than sign. So 196 is greater than 157. So let's go back to the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. All right, that one said they has to be, C has squared has to be less than. This one said it had to be equal. Ah, this one said greater than, so it must be an obtuse triangle. So I'm going to put, therefore, dot, 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 the triangle is an obtuse triangle because C squared was greater than A squared plus B squared. And that's what we just showed right here. Okay, so it is an obtuse triangle, and that will conclude our lesson. Our, our lesson was on the Pythagorean theorem and its converse.